Hello, everyone. I'm Crystal Wu from Rice University. In this talk, I'd like to introduce our work, Augmented Q, an in-network abstraction for network sharing to provide precise bandwidth guarantees among different traffic constituents. It's a joint work with my colleague Zhong Wang and Rita Wang, advised by our professor Yu Jingying. In today's data centers, network infrastructure is shared among different traffic and different traffic can interfere with each other. They can make different contribution to network congestion. Here we show several cases. In the first scenario, the aggressive application ingests UDP boost traffic to the network. It will monopolize the bandwidth and style the gentle applications with TCP traffic. In the second scenario, the aggressive application open multiple flow connections and thus grab more bandwidth on the bottleneck than the gentle application. In the third scenario, different tenants use different congestion control CC algorithms to meet different performance requirements, such as high utilization or low latency. However, different CC cannot coexist gracefully. Some CC algorithms are more aggressive and will grab more bandwidth, and therefore their throughput would overwhelm others. As a result, the network fabric can be unfairly shared, leading to unpredictable network performance degradation. The root cause of the network interference and the unfair sharing is the reliance on physical queues. Aggregated traffic is buffered and transmitted by a small number of, and sometimes even just one physical queue. Such physical queue is shared by all the traffic passing through them regardless of their applications and the applied control algorithms. P here with different colors represent packets from different entities. When there's a network congestion, there's no distinguish between different traffic contributions. Also, one needs to notify the standards for rate adjustment. It cannot generate different types of congestion signals. To provide better network sharing, we propose augmented queue, the AQ. One of the key designs is that we rethink what to use for traffic control. A key question is, do we really need to rely on the physical queue information to trigger the rate control? Definitely, the answer is no, and we use a concept term the discrepancy for each entity inside. This discrepancy is provided based on the insights that the traffic rate control of an entity should be only determined by its own traffic. Concretely, it depends on the allocated rate of an entity and its traffic arrival rate. Here we show an intuition of the discrepancy. Assume there are three entities sharing the network with the same allocated rate 10 gigabits. However, at the time point, they can have different traffic arrival rate, ranging from 10 gigabits to 20 gigabits. The discrepancy can be expressed as how many packets ought to be waiting in a 10 gigabit string queue. For entity 1, the traffic arrival rate is equal to the allocated rate. The discrepancy is zero and no contingent signals is sent. Well, for entity 2 and 3, their arrival rates are larger than the allocated rate, so the discrepancy built up. Although the actual physical queue length can still be zero because the link capacity is large, and the link is now fully saturated. The congestion signals are still generated, and now it's based on the discrepancy rather than the physical queuing. Based on these insights, AQ devised a mathematical model to properly measure the discrepancy. As shown here, the discrepancy is calculated based on the integral of traffic rate and the allocated rate. Such an integral over time should be smaller than an arbitrary small number to make sure that the traffic arrival rate should converge to the allocated rate. Also, we need to keep the discrepancy positive, making sure that the rate will not keep increasing at each adjustment cycle. Therefore, we can reduce the traffic burst like the maximum traffic rate can keep the same as at zero at each cycle. And as a result, we can minimize the rate oscillation. Furthermore, AQ designs a streaming algorithm to control the traffic rate at the packet level. Recall that the previous mathematical model is defined at the granularity of traffic. Well, in practice, 
traffic is arrived packet by packet. So we conduct a mapping from traffic rate to packet sequence. At the time point, the rate can be inflected by the packet size and the arrival time intervals of different packets. And based on this, AQ converts the mathematical model from the continuous domain at the root level to the discrete domain at the packet level. As shown here, the discrepancy is updated at the arrival of each packet and is determined by the discrepancy of last packet and how much is drained between the time intervals. It should be no less than zero and packet size should also be counted. Another interesting part of a QK design is that it decouples the generation of network feedback from the physical queues. The network feedback is now generated separately based on the discrepancy of different entities, and different signals can be used simultaneously for traffic control. As shown here, different entities sharing a physical queue can have its own AQ. When packets arrive at the switch, AQ will force compute the discrepancy, and different CC algorithms can have different operations to signal congestion. For example, if the discrepancy of an AQ exceeds the limit, packets of that entity will be dropped. Otherwise, if it exceeds an ECM threshold for an entity using the ECM-based CC, packets will be marked as ECN. For delay-based CC, the switch will pick back the queuing delay to the packet header, and such queuing delay information will be updated along the path. In this way, different traffic will control their rate differently. Note that a queue's mathematical queue can just use a few computation to mimic the queuing behaviors independently. It stores no packets that can make traffic behave as if it was running in an inclusive network. Traffic passing through multiple AQs can share one physical queue so that we are not restricted by the number of physical queues in practice. With these properties, AQ can scale to production data centers. For example, 1.4 megabytes switch memory consumption is enough to support 100,000 AQs with a wide range of bandwidth granularity from 1 megabit to 1 gigabit. To evaluate AQ, we prototype it on both the S3 simulator and the final test byte. One evaluation highlight is that AQ can bond the difference of shared bandwidth. We measure the throughput and the different CC settings, and the ideal goal is to equally share the bandwidth. Without the AQ, we can observe that the ECM based CC like DC TCP can unfairly capture more bandwidth than the job based CC like Qubit and Unreno. Similarly, both job based CC and ECM based CC can style the delay based CC like Swift. Also, UDP always monopolizes the bandwidth. On the other hand, AQ can guarantee that the first shell of the network be controlled all the time. Another part is that AQ can accommodate arbitrary traffic patterns. Here we show both the workload completion time and the entity fairness when different VMs have different traffic patterns. We can observe that AQ has shorter completion time than the two kinds of root limiting solutions because it can fully utilize the allocated bandwidth even under dynamic traffic volume changes. For fairness, higher is better. AQ can improve the fairness and the different number of VMs, and the benefits become more obvious when the number of VMs increases. In summary, AQ is a new network abstraction to provide better network sharing that reduces the reliance of its OQs. It can differentiate traffic from different entities and control the traffic rate separately based on different network feedback. Also, it provides precise bandwidth guarantees among different traffic constituents across the application layer, transport layer, and the link layer. Due to the time limit, there are several other interesting aspects not involved here. For example, AQ can also target small user cases, like the inbound and outbound bandwidth guarantees for VMs, dealing with additional physical natures and limitations. Based on different scenarios, AQ can be applied at either the ingress or the egress pipeline, or the both sides. Also, we provide more analysis 
to justify the design choices of discrepancy measurement. There are more other details in our paper, and feel free to refer it if you are interested. That's all of my talk. Thank you all.